Now consider the following example from William Crystal, editor of the Weekly Standard, in his defense of conservative governance. He breaks down his defense into a number of categories, economic, cultural, military, diplomatic, and so on, allowing his audience to weigh each separately. I feel that I'm here to adopt that poor orphan that Bob, uh, Bob thinks is just uh, everyone's running away from. And since I'm a compassionate conservative, I'm happy to, uh, to take that orphan home. And if that orphan is, is modern conservatism, the conservative movement started over 50 years ago, the modern American conservative movement. Uh, it got modified in the 70s, I would say, particularly by the uh, influence of religious conservatives on the one hand and neoconservatives on the other. Conservatism really came to power in 1980, obviously, with Reagan, and more or less, I think it's fair to say, shaped, shaped more public policies than not over the subsequent 25 years uh, until now. And I am more than happy for conservative, I mean, given the normal complexities of any movement and its differences within itself, and the difficulties of transforming theory into practice, et cetera, et cetera, I'd be more than happy for conservatism to be judged by the results. Let's compare 1980 and today. Do we really think conservative economic policies have failed? I shouldn't ask rhetorical questions in this room since I guess I know the answer. Right. <laughs> if people who want to go back to the stagflation of 1979, 70% marginal tax rates, uh, highly regulated airline industries, etc., can make that case. But I think on the whole, I'm very happy to defend the proposition that the basic thrust of supply-side economics, deregulation, tax cuts, freeing up of markets has been good for the country, has produced very impressive economic growth over a quarter century, has helped other parts of the world grow economically, that in other parts of the world, like China and India, I much prefer India as a democracy, but nonetheless in both of them, the adoption of market-based capitalist uh, principles brought hundreds of millions of people out of poverty, um, and that basically the conservative record on economics is a pretty impressive success by historical standards. I would even say a pretty unambiguous success. And the truth is, the left isn't going to actually roll much of that back, uh, and can't, I think, roll much of that back. Uh, Rudy, so that was at the national level with Reagan, uh, on economic policy, on other social issues, on crime. Rudy Giuliani took over the wonderful liberal city of New York and uh, was an awfully effective mayor and reduced crime and made the city livable again on welfare reform. We had a nice empirical test in 1996. That was a clear fight, a conservative priority for 20 years. Changing welfare, terrible predictions from the left about what a terrible what a disaster that would be. And I don't notice the even the most left-wing Democratic presidential candidates uh, campaigning on restoring AFDC. Uh, on cultural and social issues, that's more complicated, and obviously one doesn't have a kind of empirical test quite the way one does in some of these other areas, but I would very much defend the conservative and neoconservative concerns about the erosion of the family, the sense that a kind of excessive liberationism had ran, uh, posed real risks to uh, the social fabric, and especially to children. How one solves these problems is very complicated, and I would never claim that conservatives have all the answers there, but I think the alarm at some of these modern trends uh, from the right, including from religious conservatives, was uh, intelligent and um, somewhat vindicated by events. And in foreign policy, uh, Reagan had one of the greatest vindications, I think, that any president can have, coming to power with a clear change of policy with respect to the Soviet Union, and leaving power as the Soviet Union crumbled, and then its successor, President Bush, presiding over the peaceful collapse of the Soviet Union, and then the integration of Central and Eastern Europe, at least, unfortunately, not Russia so much so far, but of Central and Eastern Europe into a Europe whole and free. Now here, here it gets complicated to say what's conservatism and what's not, but at least my form of conservatism, which I will Reaganite, you know, neoconservative, uh, uh, aggressive um, willingness to use American power, both military, but also, of course, political and diplomatic for the uh, supporting our friends and, and, and around the world and promoting democracy, I would say also uh, has certainly been indicated in the case of the Soviet Union and Europe and actually Asia, I would say. Obviously, it's been tougher in the Middle East. I think it's the right prescription, however, in the Middle East. And uh, the war in Iraq was badly executed, but I'm by no means willing to concede there, e even there, that we would be better off not to have gone to war and to have Saddam reconstituting his nuclear weapons program, which George Chenet says in his book he would be doing right around 2007. Um, so I think actually 
I'm perfectly happy to defend the achievements of conservatism on net over the last 25 years, and I hope liberals learn something from those achievements, and I'll come here 25 years from now and defend the achievements of a newly revitalized liberalism that's been informed by the great successes of the conservative movement. You'll notice that both Clinton and Crystal give examples and reason for their views. These are called proofs. There are two kinds of proofs in classical argument. The positive proof is called confirmatio, and the negative proof is called refutatio. They can occur in any order in the body of the argument, but most arguments about topics that really matter will call for both kinds of proofs. Let's look at those proofs now. Confirmatio. When we make a claim which supports our point, and then seek to convince our audience of its truth, we're engaged in confirming our major claims. In most cases, people back up claims with evidence and examples, or with reasoning for those claims which cannot be proved empirically, such as claims of value. Consider the following two brief examples. Each of these are taken from speeches which contain many more such acts of confirmation. Note how, in this brief confirmation, Angela Davis deploys independent statistical analysis to confirm her claim that institutional racism continues to disenfranchise many citizens of color. And 54% of all black families are not even able to live a decent life if you use the, the standards that have been established by the Department of Labor, the U.S. Department of Labor, 54%. The fact is, in 1976, 60% of black youth could not find a job. And you talk about black women. Hey, you know, we haven't had it uh, this bad in a long, long time. In this example, note how labor leader Cesar Chavez offers poignant examples of worker exploitation to confirm his claim that the audience should boycott companies producing grapes. But those workers are working in conditions that are horrendous. Workers are denied just basic human rights. The right to use the restroom is an example that you can't because if you do, you lose time away from your work and you lose production time. There are about 60,000 workers in the table grape industry and they're all literally slaves. They're putting tremendous quotas. See, they want to get rid of the women after you get 45 or older. Women, they want to get rid of them because there are a lot of new people coming, new immigrations coming in, young women. They want to train them, get the women out. So the way they get them out is with tremendous, huge co production quotas on those women. And you have people, women working one and two hours before the official startup time. They work through the break. They work with one sandwich in their hand, working during the, the, the lunch hour, and they work past the, the quitting time. They work 11 and 12 hours pay for nine hours to be able to get the quota not to lose the jobs. They want to get them out. These are the women that made the industry. They've been working there 20 and 30 years. These are the experts.